Hi everybody, this is Redhead Goes Healthy and welcome back to the channel. So this is Mindful Mondays. We are making our way through James Clear's Atomic Habits and today we are talking about chapter three. The title of chapter three is How to Build Better Habits in Four Simple Steps. Sounds like one of those infomercials. I like it. He begins by telling us why your brain builds habits. The thing about our brains is that uh, our brains are constantly trying to make decisions when they're faced with something new. You explore possible solutions until bam, you get one that actually works and you experience a reward. For instance, if you're feeling stressed and you suddenly decide to eat, you then feel calm. This is essentially what's known as a feedback loop. We try, we fail, we learn and then we try differently. What I found interesting is uh, as our habits are created, our brain activity actually decreases. So essentially our habits can become automatic so we don't think about them anymore. Our brain doesn't have to do any work when we're doing our habits, which means that they can allow us to have more energy for other things that we do in our life that do require decision-making. The whole process of building a habit can be broken down into four components. The cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. So the cue triggers our brain to initiate a particular behavior. The craving is the motivational force behind a habit, and it's always linked to a desired change in our internal state. The response is the actual habit that you perform, and the reward is the end goal of that habit. We end up chasing rewards because they, one, satisfy us, and two, they teach us which actions are worth remembering in the future. And we can further split these four steps into two phases. We have the problem phase, and then we have the solution phase. It's important to recognize that all of us have habits right now. It can be as simple as when we turn on a light switch in a dark room, that is a habit. It also could be just brushing your teeth every morning. I think that all this seems really simple on the surface, but it actually has some profound implications. So like for instance, I was thinking about a particular habit that I have that I'm not too happy with. I have this habit of checking my phone in the morning. So the cue is my phone next to me on my nightstand. It's there, I see it. And my desire, my craving is to like check it. It's my curiosity. I wanna see like what notifications I have. So of course the response is to pick up the phone and then I'll see the notifications and the reward is that I've satisfied my curiosity. So scrolling through my phone becomes associated with it being next to me in bed basically. And so if I wanted to break that habit, and we'll talk about this when we get to his different laws, I need to make it less available to me. It shouldn't be next to me. And if I do that long enough, then my phone will no longer be associated with satisfying that desire to check the notifications, at least in the morning. I just found it kind of interesting how the uh, reward and the cue become associated with one another. I don't know if others found that kind of interesting. He has a chart in the book that I actually had to go through. I had to like make sure I understood his logic there. It was just kind of interesting. So that's it for chapter three. He concludes by talking about what is coming next. The next thing that we're gonna be talking about is uh, basically how to make a cue less obvious or more obvious to you, which will then allow us to change or adapt to new habits. Thank you all for watching and I'd love to know your takeaway from this chapter. If you found it kind of boring or dry, that's fine too. Uh, I'm excited to talk through the next couple of chapters with you guys.